graphing parabolas. Let me get my notes here. Graphing parabolas with finding the vertex. So we're actually going to do a couple of problems off your homework. Um, this is the first one we're going to do is number two on your homework. And so when you get to your homework, you can just kind of copy this down. You'll have already done it. So number two says, and it's written kind of funny from what you guys maybe are used to, but it says f of x is equal to that just means x squared plus 2x minus 2. Okay. Yeah, f of x is kind of just another way of writing y. Technically, what it means is a function of x. And y is usually a function of x in the algebra. Um, so this is basically just another way of writing. There are some subtle differences that you might get into later. But for today, just kind of think of this as saying y equals. Okay? y equals x squared plus 2x plus 2. That, it doesn't really, it's not going to affect anything that you do. So we could totally graph this with a t-chart. Totally possible. Right? We'd start plugging in points. We'd try to find the vertex. We'd find different points around the vertex. It would work. But there is a better way. Right? Basically, some mathematicians got really tired of having to do a t-chart every time they did the problem. They were like, this is silly. I mean, what if like, what if it was like 3,000x plus 20.796x minus one third. Using a t-chart is going to get really tedious if you're plugging in a point and every time you've got to be like using a decimal and a fraction and this huge number. So what they did was they said, we're just going to find the vertex for any parabola ever. And what they found was a formula called the axis of symmetry formula. And it turns out if you have a parabola, the vertex is always along always along something called the axis of symmetry, which is an imaginary line down the center of the parabola that makes it so that the parabola is symmetrical on either side of that line. The axis of symmetry goes through the x point of the vertex. So the axis of symmetry is written as x equals, because it's that x point along the vertex. And then what they found is it's negative b over 2a, where a, b, and c are different coefficients in front of x squared, x, and the constant term. So what would a be in this particular equation? Zero or one. Yeah, it would have to be one, right? Notice if a is ever zero, what would happen to this axis of symmetry? It wouldn't exist. Yeah, we'd be dividing by zero. But that actually kind of makes sense because if a is zero, then we don't have a parabola. In order to have a parabola, we have no, to have an x squared. squared. Yeah. So if a was 0, there is no parabola. It's just a line, so there is no axis of symmetry. So to graph this parabola, what we're going to do is we're going to first find our axis of symmetry. We're going to plug in b and a, and we're going to say x is equal to negative 2 over 2 times a is 1. So in this case, it would be negative 1. Our axis of symmetry is negative 1. Hmm. OK. It doesn't really help us to graph a parabola, because that's just a straight up and down line. It's just telling us that our parabola is going to be symmetrical around here. But how do we know? where on this line our vertex is. It could be here, it could be here, it could be down here. And what we do is actually probably not what you're thinking. Because the way that Gary showed you yesterday only works if we don't have this. Oh, so we don't just right? look at C and we don't just yeah, look at C. Yeah, so we can't just look at C. It's a good thought. 
It worked for pretty much everyone that you did yesterday, but it won't work for this one. So if we have an x point, how could we find a y point that's along this, or an f of x that's along this parabola? What could we do? Yeah, we could plug that in. And that's going to allow us to find our f of x, or I'm just going to write y. Okay. So y is going to equal this parabola, but where x is negative 1. So it would be 1 times negative 1 squared plus 2 times 1, I mean negative 1, minus 2. I'm just taking my x part of my vertex and plugging it in to find the y part of the vertex. So if I square negative 1, that just becomes 1, 1. And then I've got 1 here. And I want you to notice something that happens because it actually happens in every single problem. Every time that you plug in your x, these two terms are opposite in sign. And this one's twice as big. So if I start with 1, this is negative 2. So these two, the first two, then become negative 1. Minus 2. That's just kind of a quick way as you're going along checking this, or doing this, to kind of quickly check yourself. If I had 3 minus 2, I would say to myself, wait, that's, that's not following the pattern, right? Because it's not 1 and 2. If it was 3, it would have to be negative 6 here, after I plugged it in. A negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. There's no pattern to that last step. This just kind of moves the parabola again. So my vertex <laughs> is negative 1, <laughs> negative 3. There's my vertex. That seemed like a lot of work to just find one point there. That's way more work than you did yesterday to find one point. Yeah. But what's so important about this point? The vertex. The vertex. So, you, so, you're so then we just use our pattern. Oh, it's x squared. So I just go over 1, up 1. Mirror that on the other side. Over 2, up 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Mirror that on the other side. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Oh. Right? Over two up four. So once we find out where that vertex is, the rest of the steps are really easy. We don't have to find any other points other than just going over one up one, over two up four. If there's a number in front of x squared, we go over one up that many over 2 up 4 Positive. times that many. If it's negative, we go over and down. So let's do a couple more examples to practice those things. So this one's going to be number 1 on your homework. Number 1. X squared minus 2x. How do I find my vertex? I start with the x. x equals negative b over 2x. What is b in this problem? It's uh, 2. Negative 2? Yeah, we have to so, include that minus. So, it's so b, negative b would be negative negative 2. Or positive 2. Right? Because it's negative, and then b is negative 2. The negatives cancel. And then 2a, what's a? Um, one. Just 1, so it's 2 over 2. The x part of my vertex is 1. Okay, how do I find the other part of my vertex, that f of x? I just plug 1 into my equation. So I have 1 squared minus 2 times 1. So it would be 1 minus 2. You see how that follows the pattern? 
twice as big opposite sign. So the y part of my vertex is negative 1. Okay, then I can graph that. The x was 1, the y was negative 1. And I look in front of x squared, it's just a normally shaped, Gary calls it standard parabola guy. Right? We go over 1, up 1, mirror that on the other side. Over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. And mirror that on the other side. I'm usually plotting five points is enough for a parabola. I made that a little bit too Z like. Well, wait, I don't get the plotting part. Wait. So from the vertex, yeah. I'm just going over one, up one squared, which is one. And then over two, up two squared, which is four. If there's a number in front of x squared, I multiply that times how much I'm doing that. Yeah. So how did you get one over on the graph? How did you get? How did I go over one up one? So like from the origin, how did you get to the right? How did I know where this was? Yeah. Because I found that my x was one and my y was negative one. That's my vertex. So my vertex is 1, negative 1. one negative. Wait, how would, if we were to see in the problem, like say the series is negative 3, mm -hmm. would that be, like, down 3, would it be negative 4 then? Uh-huh, it would have. Okay. Yeah, because I just plug it in. Let's do one more example. And I want to actually do, this is not one on your homework, but I want to do one... That's similar to the ones that you did yesterday. So what if I had 3x squared minus 7? So the seven So what's yeah, missing from this one? A B. A B. So when I find the x part of my vertex, negative B over 2A. It's just the A. Yeah, the one. B is 0, right? So that would be 0. Yeah. So what's that telling me about this parabola? If the x part of the vertex is zero, then, then the, it's yeah, centered yeah, right on, on that y-axis. And then to find y, I just plug zero in here. It would just be zero minus seven. Technically, it's three times zero squared. What's three times zero squared? Yeah. Still zero. Yeah. So. So my vertex is 0, negative 7. seven. And then I look in front of my x squared. I'm going to go over 1, up 1, 2, 3. Because I'm going over 1 squared times 3. Over 2, up 12. Over 2, up exactly. Normally we go up 4, but now we have to go up 4 times 3, which is 12. Because That's how much we normally would go up. So normally it's over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4. Over 3, up 9. So it's just over and then up that number squared. When we have something in front of x squared, we multiply that times this row. So instead of going over 1 up 1, we go over 1 up 1 times 3, which is 3. Instead of going over 2 up 4, we go up 4 times 3, which would be 4 times 3. 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And the parabola goes on forever. I could go over three up nine times three, which would be twenty-seven. But that probably wouldn't fit on my graph. That's typically why we only do five points. Because usually that sixth and seventh point is like off your graph. Okay. 
Other questions? So step one, find the x part of your vertex. Wait, if there's no yeah. um, whatever, like if that's the problem, will it always be negative? Like the c, that's as the vertex? Well, it is whatever it is in the problem. The problems on but your homework no are all made to like fit on your graph. Yeah, but if there's no b, will it always be c as the vertex? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. yeah, because b will always be 0, the x yeah. part, and then when you plug 0 in, you'll just have cx. Yeah, yeah, that's a good observation. So step one, use negative b over 2a to find the x part of your vertex. Step two, plug in the x part to find the y part of your vertex. Step three, plot your vertex on the graph. Step four, use this pattern to plot the other four points. Oh, that's a pattern. That's yeah, weird. over one, up one, oh. right? Except we multiply it times whatever in front of x squared. No, that pattern